Good morning, everybody. I'm back today to talk about the, the test finger. I've got that all built and put together. I did it first through the Arduino directly using nothing but the, you know, uh, test Arduino code. Wasn't, uh, wasn't too impressed. It just zipped right up, zipped right back down. There wasn't much control you could do with it. And I, I needed to uh, hook it up to the my robot lab, just see what kind of features I could do with that. So that's where I'm going to start this morning and let you just see it right from the uh, robot lab, my robot lab software. It's a little more interesting that way. So let me get the uh, everything fired up here and ready to go. Now remember, I'm starting this from my little bat file that I wrote and explained yesterday. When I was telling you about my first introduction to my robot lab. So now we've got things fired up. We've got the uh, web GUI up. So I'm going to go down to intro. Remember, this is where you start in move under the finger print. So there's the new InMove 2 uh, software interface. I really like that. That's a big improvement over the old version. So I, I would recommend if you're new, don't don't try the, the old. Just get brave and go with this new version. I think you'll enjoy it. And I'm going to come down here to services and I'm going to say start all. And we'll listen to him start up. Starting mouth. Set language pack to English. Chat that loaded. I may start other components. Please wait. Starting is. Starting head. Starting mouth control. Starting left arm. Starting left hand. Starting right arm. Starting right hand. Starting torso. Startup sequence completed. Okay, now that the sequence is complete, you can see here on the left hand side that I have a lot more services running. And you can look here, I have the total right hand, and then the wrist, the thumb, the ring finger, the pinky, and I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. I am sure. For how long? And then the index finger. Now, I will make a point of remembering that. I'm going to silence Ralph here. That way he doesn't interfere with my talking to you. So the the tutors tutorials always say use the index finger. So that's where we're going to go. But before I can do anything with the, the index, I need a controller. You can see here. It says this I'm on the controller and there's no controllers listed. So let's go back up here to the overall listing and we'll go down to this symbol which is for controllers. And I'm going to go to settings and I'm using the right hand again. That's the one that all the tutorials tell you to use. So I'm going to turn on the, the right side of the robot. With that controller enabled, now I, am, I can come over here and it's listed as a service. So I have to tell it a couple of things, right? First of all, what type of Arduino board am I using? And I am using the Uno, but just so you can see, you can make a selection of what uh, Arduino board you're using. And the port is COM port 4 and the default is 11, uh, 11, 50, uh, 115,200 is the baud rate. That's what they recommend so just leave it there. 
and then I'm going to connect. And my little dot turns green saying I'm connected. So just to verify what's going on, I'm going to drop down into the right serial port itself. And you can see that it's set for COM4 and that it's active and alive. That was all done when I did the connect. I just wanted you to see it. So now I have an active serial port and I have a service that I can control a finger with. By the way, I, I did download, of course, and install the Arduino code that uh, they've developed to go in to control a hand. So let's look up here in right hand index. Here we have it. I need to assign it to a controller. So right here in the middle of everything, I get nothing. <laughs> there it is. It finally popped up. And attach it. You know, see, I had to assign it to a controller and I had to assign it to a pin number. It fills in the default pin, the one that they've developed the software to work with. So if you haven't done anything strange, it should come up assigned to the, to the proper pin. Then you have to enable this. I know sometimes it uh, doesn't enable right away. Sometimes you need to do it once or twice. Math minus, I don't know what that error is, but it showed me that I had attached correctly. Let me detach it and reattach it. All right, let me do a reset on the Arduino. We'll give that a second to reboot, see if that makes a difference. Meantime, I'm going to go back here. All right, serial port. Com port. Everything looks good there. Shows I'm still connected. Go back to the index finger. Try enabling it again. You know, acts like it's not enabling. However, it is responding. There. <laughs> Don't ask me why that's that's bouncing that may be just a uh, an undocumented feature called a bug we'll find out in the future i'd never seen that before but we'll go back to the basic control and look at that a little bit now you get three things to look at here input rest and output i'm going to go back to rest So this servo is anything from 0 to 180, and the rest position defaults to 2%, which is fine. Now I'm going to drop down so you can see my, my finger movement. All right, there's my my finger, and I have the, the prescribed uh, servo. This is strictly built according to the, the uh, tutorial with his servo gear, or pulley on here and everything. So let's see how it behaves. As I move this percentage, of the servo. Now you see it beginning to creep. Watch right here. You'll see it begin to creep. 
and the finger is responding. But notice here that my finger is fully contracted, but I'm only at 142 instead of at the 180 mark. There's a little slop in that string and that you saw it there flop right there at the end. It just fell over. So now I'll, I'll uh, lay that finger back down. But before I do, let me enlarge this a little bit and show you what's going on. Look at that string. Look how much slack is in that string right there. Okay, The, the side that pulled the finger up is taut. But the side that's going to pull that finger back down and straighten it out has slack in it. So as I studied the, the hand and the forearm and all that stuff, I, I saw where they've added springs to, to add tension to those. Uh, they've added springs to add tension to the wire or strings that are controlling the finger. I watched a, a video and another member has created a different pulley assembly here where he's actually using two pulleys. He puts the, the contraction side on the large pulley just as you see it here, but he has a second pulley that screws on right here that he puts the retraction uh, side on. and when you watch his video, there's no slack. And he did it all with, with no springs and everything. A, a much simpler solution than all those springs that you see in the forearm. So that's the method I'm going to go with. So with, with this slack pointed out, I'll minimize this again. Move it back up out of the way. Whoops. Okay, now I'm going to drop this percentage down, this angle. You can see the, see the pulley moving, but this, just getting to the slack there. The slack was just taken up, and the finger is actually beginning to move. And I'm moving it nice and slow so that you can see bingo you see now that slack popped that finger down that was the slack in, in the upper string popped it down come on and I'm slowly lowering that fingertip the rest of the way down but look where I'm at I'm at 42 degrees and that fingertip is just straight. So the, the rest of that movement, see, look at this. I'm, I'm going from zero to 35 before I even get any control out of that, that servo. It just sits there and, like it's dead and does nothing. Now, I've elected to use a 5 volt power supply because it was convenient instead of a 6 volt power supply and I don't know if that's affecting that servo or not but uh, I took advantage and played a little bit with the software to see what I could do about that, that dead spot and I discovered that I could come over here and I could go to the tab for limits and I can move that start limit all the way up here to about 30 degrees without affecting anything and so then I went on the high end remember I showed you that dead spot I had up there and I moved this all the way down to about 150 degrees I could have done that 
I guess I should have done it up here. This is where I had originally done it. There we go. That was the proper way to do it. I had actually moved the wrong um, item down here. So now I've set the minimum is 30 and the maximum is 150. So I'm restricting the movement of that servo right here on the screen. That, that was a, a nice feature. I learned a lot there. So if I come back to the basic screen, I can also set the speed at which I want this finger to move. Anywhere from slow, you know, see speed is how many degrees you want to move per second. So right there, man, I'd be slinging that, that finger back and forth. So I like, I like it for testing down here about 22 degree, degrees or 12 degrees per second. That, that let me play with the finger and observe the behavior. So let's run through this again. See how I'm getting immediate response now because I, I kind of took that dead spot out of that servo. And again, see there now the slack is beginning to form right there. And I moved it all the way up to 150 degrees and it stops. And I eliminate the rest of that servo movement that did nothing. I'll lower it down again. You can see I'm taking up the slack there. And now I'm beginning to, to actually move the finger. And I fall over on the slop from the top string. And I lay the fingertip back down. And I stop at 32 degrees, eliminating all that bottom end movement that the servo actually didn't obey. Just one last thing that I'll, I'll point out here, and I'll close it up. I wanted you to see some, some movements down here. We'll hide the finger for a second. Now, because I've got the robot talking, let me see if I can stop him. Manual. There. Now I wanted you to see that, that that as the commands are going out, they show you the position that the, that it's moving to. And so you can track it. It'll fall. Those those output positions fall. You can see it maybe coming up and down there. They follow that, whoops, they playing with the speed and my mistake, people. Here, if I move the, see the, see the count going up, 41, 42, 44, down here, 47. It's corresponding with the degree that you put it here. So we're sending the degree of movement to the servo, to the Arduino. And the Arduino is doing the interpretation of that, which is kind of nice to know. All right, so we, we played around with this finger a little bit, got to see it in action. Let me show you the change in, what the change in the speed does. <laughs> Slaps that sucker down on the tabletop. So we actually get to control the speed of these servos, make uh, nicer movements, more human-like movements, which was nice. See, I can ramp that sucker all the way up. That finger still moves at the prescribed speed. Very nice. And I'll point out when I'm doing my hand, I'll point out the new uh, servo pulley that I that I'm 
is that that I've elected to use. All right, guys. Hope that's helpful and meaningful. Have a good day.